What is going on guys? So today I just want to do a video going over some of the quality of life changes, overall just system changes, just talking about those coming on the September 12th patch. One of the uh, new changes they're going to be adding is 40,000 stamina. So the mats right now we have is 30,000. It's going to go all the way up to 40,000. So a nice 10% increase will allow us to run faster for longer. Um, of course, it's going to require some type of crafting item, just like all the other ones. Um, but hopefully it's not too expensive. But I always do like these type of things. I feel like, honestly, our wind walking should be up to like at least 50,000. Because it's like really freaking annoying when you're running and then you run out of stamina. And then you have to just like walk and walk and walk and wait for it to recharge. So uh, I definitely do like this little increase, this little quality of life improvement. Let us run around even more. Besides that, we also have a new dungeon coming called the Shadow Moor. So this is going to be a good end game dungeon, just like, you know, Sandstorm Temple is an end game dungeon right now. It's going to be a new addition to that. Uh, another thing is for hard mode, they're actually going to be adding the Merchant of Wonders to that. Uh, the big thing to note is that they kind of said we're balancing how often the Merchant of Wonders appears now that he is available in an additional dungeon. Basically, that's a fancy word for they're probably going to be reducing the amount of times Merchant of Wonders spawns in hard mode dungeons just because now he's in an additional dungeon. So... Unfortunately, he's probably going to get a reduction in his drop chance, and that's going to kind of suck. Uh, honestly, right now, his drop chance is already pretty damn low. Like, I've, I've done hard mode dungeons, and usually you don't see him, like, come into, like, the 6th or 7th run of a hard mode dungeon. So, the drop rate is not super good, and then a lot of times, his drop table is actually pretty bad. It's pretty rare you get a nice drop list, so... Uh, I really don't like this. Hopefully they actually don't nerf his drop chance of appearing in dungeons, but we'll have to see. I can only assume that's what they're going to be doing, just because, I mean, they're going to be adding him to another hard mode dungeon. Besides that, Nightfall Sanctuary is getting a nerf to all the raids. Um, the whole entire raid dungeon, everything inside it, all the bosses, all four bosses are going to be getting some type of reduction to their difficulty. Some are more significant than others, but that's definitely going to help out a lot of clans. Uh, you know, even to this day, a lot of clans have a lot of trouble clearing Nightfall Sanctuary, if not clearing it, even be able to run it because the gear requirements are so high. Um, so definitely it's going to be nice to reduce the reduction a little bit. It's still going to be very, very difficult, but at least more clans to run it. That means more people can get like their Peacekeeper accessories, like the legendary gear, um, and hopefully gear up faster. So that's going to be a nice little reduction to everyone. Uh, besides that, they also did add some new crafting updates. Some of the crafting things that are going to be changing is actually removing some recipes. For example, the sealed raven shield engravings are going to be removed. Also, the sealed whirlwind shield engravings are going to be removed also. Uh, mainly because these, most people are not crafting these anymore. They're pretty low tier soul shields uh, enhancers. So not going to be really needing those too much anymore. Uh, basically, besides that, they're also going to be removing pentagonal diamond pouches and hexagonal diamond pouches. And then for the following crafting recipes, they're going to be reducing their cost. So for example, the heptagonal diamond pouch and the octagonal diamond pouches are going to get their costs reduced. Also, the triangle diamond pouches are going to get their costs reduced. And the last but not least, they're going to be adding a crafting recipe to the Soul Wardens, which is the new wind walking item that you need to be able to increase your wind walking by 10,000. Just like all the other previous ones, like the purification jar and uh, the antler and everything like that. That was going to be called the Chi Flut Stone. And, you know, we'll have to see how much it costs. But it'll probably be a little pricey. We'll have to see. Overall, those are kind of the little crafting changes. Nothing too significant. But definitely going to be removing some uh, crafting recipes. And then also reducing the cost of them. Next thing they're going to be changing with the new update is the Oath Necklace, the Destiny Ring, and the Immortality Earring are no longer going to be upgradable. Uh, they're not going to have any stages or anything like that. Literally, you can just option them and that's it. You can't spend any gold materials nothing on them anymore um and this is a great change honestly because uh, countless blind soul youtubers like myself have made guides telling new players don't waste your legendary jewels don't waste your materials on upgrading these just keep them at stage one if you option them and don't worry about them spend your uh legendary jewels and stuff like that on like your bt accessories that actually matter um so definitely it's nice that they're doing this you know so more new players can't fall into the trap of wasting their materials upgrading this uh, one thing to mention is that you no longer will be able to get a red dragon from these when you salvage them at stage 10. Just because, I mean, once they have no stages and you can't upgrade them, they're not going to make it so that you can just literally buy an oath necklace, salvage it, and have a red dragon. That'd be very broken. So no longer can get these from those. So make sure maybe if you really need one, upgrade it to stage 10 if you're, you know, an experienced player. And uh, get your red dragon to use that for your higher tier gear. 
So next thing they're going to be doing is reducing the amount of bravery coins you need to option your Hamun secret technique volumes. So if you guys don't know what these are, basically these are used to unlock secret skill abilities. So if you go here, you'll see like this one I haven't unlocked. For example, this one I don't. You'll see the red. It's a little uh, scroll icon next to the ability. Uh, most of my Hamun skills I already have a lot, the important ones at least. Uh, but these are really nice for really anyone in general. A lot of classes really need their Hamun secret skills to boost their DPS and overall rotation. Uh, so getting these is going to help a lot. So they're just going to be reducing it. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't state how many and like how much it's going to be reduced by. But I'm assuming it's going to be by a lot just because really this change is probably fueled by the new Warden class. I mean, a lot of people are going to be picking up that class, a lot of new players, and really anyone in general is going to be trying it. And so they're going to need their Homeland Secret skills eventually. So reducing these is going to make it easier for them. And that's also going to help out just any new player in general on any class. So I definitely like this change a lot. Just make these more accessible. And we'll have to see on patch day how much it is reduced by. Another change is just going to be for Warlots only, but it's going to help them out a lot. And it's really good timing since the Warden class is coming out with their own Soul Burn. It's going to help them compete with them pretty well. Uh, if you have a Mystic Badge from Vortex Temple and you're a Warlock, you actually can hold on to those. And then on Patch Day, you can trade them in for the updated version of these uh, Mystic Badges. Basically, these Mystic Badges, the new versions, are going to be nice buffs to the Warlock class. They're just really funneling them more damage, more damage boosts and attack power modifiers to them. Because uh, really for a while, the only really great effect that the Warlocks got was the Blackwing effect, which is a really OP and strong Soul Burn buff. But the problem is it doesn't boost their overall single target DPS, where all the other classes got a nice attack power bonus for themselves. For example, you know, I get an 800% attack power bonus with my Thunder Slash ability. Warlock's not getting any damage boost for themselves, which makes their DPS quite low. So really with this new change, it's going to help them out a lot and increase their own DPS while keeping the Black Queen effect. So if you're a Warlock, you know, make sure you just hold on to your Mr. Badge and you can trade that in on patch day. And that'll help you guys out a lot. Keep your DPS numbers high. Another thing they're going to be doing is kind of a small change, but definitely want to mention it. Celestial Heart is going to be added to the storyline. So if you guys don't know, basically the storyline is going to have new chapters get expanded with the new uh, patch. And what they're going to be doing is renaming Celestial Heart to Stormbringer Heart. It's the same item, just same stats, 5 attack power, 55 critical, just a new name. It's going to be called Stormbringer Heart. And uh, when you complete and do the storyline, somewhere in between doing the storyline, you will receive this item from Act 9 of the story quest. So you can't just get it for free. You no longer have to farm the 2500 peaches to get it. Uh, for some reason, if you want to farm the peaches for them, you can still get it. It just will have a new name, which will be the Stormbringer name. Uh, but you can get it for peaches still. But it's really nice for a new player or just really any person with an old character that doesn't have their heart yet. You can literally just do the storyline and get a free heart and not have to worry about uh, farming the peaches for that. Nice little change there. Last but not least is the big gem changes. So one of the biggest things they're doing with the gems is just making it uh, in general cheaper to transmute your gems. So for example right now if you want to get a heptagonal diamond which is 50 cents of tad power, you know, pretty decent gem. It's going to cost one gem fragment and six gem powders. So that's a total of 16 gem powders because, you know, it costs 10 to get one fragment. What they're going to be doing is reducing all these in half. So it's only going to cost eight gem powders total now after the September 12th update. Same thing for octagonal. It costs six gem fragments, four gem powders. After the update, it's going to cost 32 gem uh, powders. And then last but not least, you know, the diamond triangle legendary gem is only going to cost 128 Hamun gem powders instead of 25 fragments and six gem powders so again everything is getting cut down in half and it's just going to be way cheaper to transmute gems i do like this a lot just because transmuting a gem is pretty damn expensive trying to get these gem fragments you know they're well over 150 gold a piece and gem powders are around 20 gold a piece it's just pretty damn pricey so i do like that they're doing some type of reduction just to make it easier to get higher tier gems because gems are so important for your ap and just your damage overall uh, it's nice that they're doing this Besides that, you want to hold on to your gems. So basically, when the patch day comes on September 12th, there'll be a little prompt window, the little salvage prompt window. And basically what happens is you'll, you know, you click on your gem, it'll say salvage. And what you'll do is you'll salvage your gem, and then it's going to give me a complete copy of the gem you salvage. But it's also going to give you some free Hamun gem powders depending on high, uh, how high the tier of your gem is. So for example, if you have, you know, the Hamun Octagonal Diamond and you trade that in, you're going to get 32 gem powders from that. If you have a Heptagonal Gem and you salvage that with the September 12th update, 
you'll get eight gem powders. Uh, the lower tiers will be two. Pendragon will be one. You know, so on, so on. So, basically, you know, just having your gems right now and salvaging them on September 12th with the update, you're gonna get free gem powders. And these are the Hall Moon versions, so you can actually sell them on the marketplace and make a decent profit off that. Uh, who knows? You know, I'm assuming gem powders are trying to go higher in price for sure. Uh, we'll have to see how it affects the economy. But, you know, you can either sell them or you can use them to transmute some higher tier gems since it's so cheap now. So, you know, there's a ton of options, but it's pretty nice that literally you don't have to do anything. You just wait for the patch day and you get your gem back and some free gem powders. So make sure, you know, don't salvage your gems now. Wait until the update, but you're going to get some free stuff. So definitely pretty cool there. Um, anyways, besides that, the Garnet is getting some changes. So we'll go over to this little guy right here and I'll show you the changes. So the Garnet changes basically right now it has, you know, the boss attack power and the critical. It's going to be changed into critical damage. So no longer will have critical, but it'll have critical damage. Uh, it'll give you 120 critical damage and just regular 15 attack power. So no longer will it have boss attack power. This is great because now the attack power will go towards your main AP. Because uh, I've had people get kicked from parties and then they rage. They're like, I have the extra 15, but it's boss attack power. So it doesn't show in my gear, you know, for like party AP requirements. And, you know, it's kind of frustrating. So they're just going to completely get rid of that. I don't even really know why they had it in the first place. But now it's just, now it's just going to give, you know, regular 15 attack power. And it'll just go towards your full AP. Uh, besides that, you know, as I said, the critical damage changes. Uh, besides that, also something pretty interesting is they're going to be adding a PvP Garnet. So, same thing as this one, but a little bit different in the sense that it does give the 15 attack power, but it gives critical defense. So, instead of 120 critical damage, it will give 120 critical defense. So, these are obviously going to be for, you know, the 6v6 sitzers who, you know, like doing Warwind Valley and all these, you know, Beluga Lagoon and stuff like that. So, it's going to be for the PvPers, but you can actually get... A really high tier gem with critical defense which is really essential in you know sits v sits and stuff like that if not you know you can't get the one with the critical damage and honestly it's kind of a buff because critical damage is really powerful so i do like this change and uh yeah you don't have to worry about that boss attack power anymore another little gem update is they're going to be higher tier gems now so there's a new thing it was in korea for a while so we knew it was coming but basically when you have your uh, triangle legendary gems you can actually fuse them with other gems and have combined effects you know you're not going to get a total of 64 attack power from two gems or anything like that it's a mixed i believe it's like 38 attack power for two of the triangle gems but it does give both the effects and then also you can actually have both you can have one of the same effects on both slots so for example you can have a ruby and then this one and then you can have a ruby and let's say, I don't know, a sapphire. So you can have those mitts together, which is really actually kind of OP. Uh, but, you know, if you're a really end game whale, you can do that. But it's going to be, I believe, like 50 Hamun fragments. And it's going to be very, very expensive. So it's really going to be for the super end game, end game whales and people, you know, who really have top tier gear. Uh, but most people don't really have to worry about that for a while. Besides that, one little thing. Uh, I know I lied, I did say the gems were kind of like the last thing, but one little more thing is a few items are going to be bound to account, which I do think are awesome. One of them is High Queen Wings. These will now be bound to account. God bless. This has taken so long to be bound to account. We've been asking for months and months and months. Finally, you can transfer these to your other characters. So all the High Queen Wings you have on your old characters from doing your weeklies, you probably have hundreds of them. You actually can trade them to your main and maybe get your full VT set or get your critical ones. I sure need to do it. I need to get my critical because I have a few that are not criticaled out. So um, really cool that I just transfer over my extra like freaking 150 I have. So very happy about that. We're finally getting that. Also, you know, the High Queen Rancor, the Barb, the Husk, you know, the upgrade materials to go into Ranzu. All those are bound to count. Besides that, Blood Pearls will be bound to account too, so you can trade those finally. Uh, so you can actually kind of craft them on an old character and then transfer over to your main. I'm not really sure how much it costs us to craft them right now, but you know, maybe that could be a little profit. Who knows? You could maybe help your main out a lot. Hull Moon Energy Stages 1 through 10, you can trade to any character now. Uh, so some it's kind of the lower tier of your Hull Moon Soul, but still, you know, decent. You can trade that over. Let's say you have a Hull Moon Stage 7 that you never, I don't know, upgraded. You can transfer it to your new uh, character. Hull Moon Pet Aura Stage 1 through 10 can be traded to to any character. Uh, really, that's it. Silver Scale, Silver Scale Fragment, and Sea Glasses, those will all be bound to count also. So, 
a bunch of bound account items now so you can actually trade these items again the most aside one i'm about is definitely the high queen weens super happy i know a lot of people are going to be happy about that because i mean i have like at least 200 on my old characters that i don't care to use on them i want to use on my main so really happy about that for sure uh, but yeah, that's really the biggest changes. I just wanted to go over these system changes for you guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, you know, obviously ask. And I'll see you guys in the next video real soon. I'm out.